snowy Altenburg in Germany, the first weekend of the BMW IBSF Bobsleigh and Skeleton World Championships. As we head into the fourth and final run, we are about to decide the medals in the women's bobsleigh competition. Martin Haven and John Morgan, 20 sleds and snow. What could possibly go wrong? And John, it's going to be a battle for the medals between three potentially German sleds. Well, two German sleds and uh, Kelly Humphreys at the top, but you're right, three German sleds are pressuring for the second, third, and fourth positions. This is Laura Nolta. She crashed out at last year's event when she was in a medal position, so she's going to redeem herself most likely today. Here's Team Kim Kalicki. She's medaled on every event this season so far except one, and she's got Great driving skills on the bottom part of the track. She had the best time in the third run to put herself into a challenging position, but they're chasing down this veteran of the sport, Kaylee Humphrey. She's won three World Cups on this track. She won last year's World Championships on the track, and she doesn't have the best start times. She's driving a sled that she's only got brand new earlier in the week, so she's got eight trips in this sled. One more trip down and she wins another world championship. Yeah, she's aiming for her fourth women's bobsleigh world championship. And behind her, Kalicki Nolta Schneider. That's the battle. Unless one of them crashes or two, Alana Myers Taylor is not going to get in the medals here. Nor is Mariama Yamanka, the quote German number one. Andrea Greco had a good first heat, uh, uh, first day, uh, moving herself back up the order. But last year's bronze medalist, Christine de Bruyne of Canada, 17th after three heats, not where she was last year at all. As Alana Myers Taylor warming up. Katie Humphreys and Kim Kalicki, first and second. They were first and second in last year's World Championship. So that much remains the same. There's Stephanie Schneider, as ever, with her mask pulled up over her face. She did that long before it was fashionable in COVID times. And uh, Schneider. Yeah, she could get in the medals. I, I see it as a battle between Schneider, Nolta, and Kalicki for silver and bronze. And unless Kaylee crashes, and crashes quite early in the run, maybe, then the gold could be a done deal. But we probably oughtn't to have that sort of conversation here. Snowy, Altenburg. It's just going to be laden with trip wires waiting to catch out the unwary. And John, this track, as we know from lots of previous history, takes no prisoners. There's our start list. Let's it's take... uh, worst to first in the final run. Yep, so Christine de Brown, fourth out of the traps, not where she expected to be, or Lubovchenik or Najesta Segova. Top sled from the Bobsleigh Federation of Russia is the rookie Makarova. And that's something that the Russians will have to have a long, hard think about. Two Swiss sleds in the top 10. Katy Bal, the World Cup champion, Andrea Greco, Mariama Yamanka. And then look at the German sleds up towards the top of the pile, being led by Kaylee Humphreys. Fourth and final run of the BMW IBSF Women's Bobsleigh World Championships in Altenburg in Germany. Martin Haven and John Morgan on the mics on the starting box. Poland's Sylvia Smolarek and Julia Slupeka for the driver of second world championship and her second ever here. And for Julia Slupeka, first ever race under lights and in front of TV cameras. She's not even started a World Cup race yet. <laughs> Crashed to training her first trip, Martin. But uh, here she is in her third or fourth run. Just wants to get to the bottom. And last year, she did the same thing. She completed the World Championships after crashing a couple times in training. This year, Martin, she came to the dance with a much bigger brakeman. Gets a little bit better start times. And good to see her continue to improve. She hangs out Watch most this. of the season of the Europa Cup. 16th place in last year's world. So 20th place is a little bit of a retrograde step. The only sleds that are missing from last year are the Chinese. A little mistake there. The long straightaway above this Kreisel. Look at this two-quarter combination here that it's a little dicey there, but there's a lot of dicey all over this track. <laughs> It's made from solid dice. That's what this track is made from. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's gremlin. Wow. Gremlins all over the place. 59, well, 96. Let's put it this way. 
if you've got a young driver that you want to inspire confidence in, you don't start here. No, no, unless you start in Innsbruck unless... where we were last week, which is yeah. which is like a little bit of a kinder bond compared to this. And, uh, but Innsbruck's on, on a spectacular the other hand, place to start athletes. On the other hand, if they survive, like Francesco Friedrich, then you know you've got something. Yeah, if this is your home track and this is where you learn, <laughs> Yeah. And you can start. You can see she battled all the way down. She's checking the runners. You know, and this is the uphill section out of 13. I call it the graveyard, because if you make a mistake in going uphill, and we saw it in that third run, Martin, a couple sleds really fell back because of sideways up there in that graveyard. 13th place 12 months ago, 19th place after three of the four heats. Lubov Chernik and Elena Mamedova for the Bobsleigh Federation of Russia. Let's see if Lubov can produce a better run like she did in heat three. She was the 10th best sled down this track. Martin, three countries have three sleds in the competition. The uh, Bobsleigh Federation of Russia, the Canadians, and the Germans. And it's a race within a race to emerge who's the best of that country. And we didn't expect this BFR sled to be in this position. We thought maybe she'd emerge as Russia won. Well, you wonder whether this the Russians is... will score, score enough points this year to have a three sled quote next year. And I'm not sure they will. I think they've had a pretty shocking season. I, I, think, the, I think the three sled quota was frozen from last year. I'm not yeah. sure I've heard it. I saw text on that, but hey, she's going to get to the bottom. She's going to complete four yep. heats on this track that we say is a little bit like Darlington in NASCAR. This is a track too tough to tame. It's pretty tame now because it's slow conditions. But Martin, we've seen when this track is fast and it's challenging. And that was that was kind of back to where she was before. That was 3,400 slower than her first trip down. So all the old errors crept back in again. Big this is the Omega turn Omega. up at curve four. And then all this pressure, she's got to exit this curve and she, she hit the right side. See, she hits the take on there. Does That's she? a no-no. And then watch the back end of the sled here come up in the air. So when you hit the take on there, then your sled drifts into this next curve and you have to steer. And if you don't, if you steer, that's friction. They're completed. Well, there are four heats, though. Yeah. They're down, and she came close a couple of times, but she didn't crash them. Next up, Misha McNeil of Great Britain with Montel Douglas. And again, 10 spots back from where she finished last year's Worlds in eighth place. And this is a driver who's been able to lead a World Cup race and finish in the top four on this track within the last Olympic cycle. So the question is, how do they turn this boat around and head it in the right direction? with the Olympic Games 364 days away now. For Misha Martin, McNeil, uh, for Montel Douglas and British bobsledding, this is a tough mountain to climb back up, John. Well, Martin, the Germans and the Canadians and the USA have dominated women's bobsleigh since its inception at the 2000 World Championships. Only once have the Swiss won the World Championships. That was Francois Bernal in 2001 in Calgary. And Nicola Minicello for Great Britain on Lake Placid in 2009 yep. won it. But uh, Misha, you know, we talk about it. She was fourth in this World Cup event a couple years ago and first after the first heat. So to see her back in 18th place, nothing uh, and went it's not right in this World Championship week. Yeah. It's not one run. She was 18th in the first heat, 17th in heats two and three out of 20 sleds. And again, it's just it's finding that speed on a consistent basis. And she's, and she's may not she's even have to find hold her spot. On the bottom. No, she's gonna not going to hold off Lubov Chernik by 100th. Chernik moves up one. Yeah, she's shouting three there miles. to break they woman Elena. Over, Martin, over three miles in distance, and they're separated by a hundredth of a second. That's painful, but yeah. the whole race was painful for Misha. You know, it's, this isn't where she expected to be. She's a top 10 sled when things are going right, minimum. Up top here, watch this bang. This is before the Omega curve. Now the double 
pressure points here up. Now does she steer hard? And this is now this is farther down. This is an 11-12. That's pretty good. Martin, these are great lines. All I can say, I think, here is she's got too much control. And too much control means you're steering too much. When you steer a lot, you take away your velocity. Well, they need to get more at the but start as well. Down. 18th, 18th out of 20 at the start. That's making life very tough. Christine DeBrun starting pretty much where she was last year in the low 70s, apart from the third heat. They missed the hit there as well. Christine slipped off the block. But instead of being in the top three runs, she's in the bottom three. Yeah, the starts this today were, were, were not even close to what she had yesterday. I mean, everybody else is three, 400 slower. She's 10 hundred slower than her top start yesterday. Yeah. Martin just, you know, I don't know what it is, but her husband this morning, Evo, he almost tipped over up there in the third run fell three or four spots in the second run of the World Championship for the men. So maybe it's a family thing or something, but this is not what we expected out of Christina De Bruin. She, we expected her to challenge for medals like she had done the last two World Championships. She's won bronze medals. Yeah. So and athletes going expecting. to slumps, you know? She would have been expecting to be in the hunt here after taking a bronze 12 months ago. She's going to be way down in the order. Stays ahead of Much Lubov better Janik, run here, Mark. But... Yes. Mark, Mark, she just went four tenths better. 4,500s better. I'll guarantee you nobody goes 4,500s better in this run other than this sled here. She, she saved the best for last. She might move up three or four spots. But uh, uh, this isn't what this athlete expected out of this World Championships. You know, minimum top 10. But to be back here in the 16th, 17th, I mean, Martin, this was a fantastic timed run, even with that mistake there. Look at the, does the Callan split there? No, perfect. So hardly any steering. Look at the entry into 13. Pretty textbook on that run. Well, that might be a 10th fastest run in the final heat. Yeah, 12 months to get it sorted out as they head into the games. And similarly confused, I think, will be Najesta Segova of BFR with Yulia Belomesnik behind her. No lower than eighth at the start, no higher than tenth at the bottom. Tenth, 18th, 14th in Heat 3. It's not been a consistent season, and this mirrors what's been going on all year. Well, the best start and the best speed. And there she does again, Martin. Three of the four heats, she's had a drift out of that finish, curve one. You know, I don't know what kind of runner she's got on, but she doesn't have any kind of control. I mean, you know, you want to find the fine line between control and too much steering, but this athlete from the BFR should not be back in this position. Martin, she finished sixth last year in the World Championships here? Uh, yeah, yeah. Two top six finishes in the last three oh. World Championships, and here 16th is about. Here as comes a good, good run. As likely to do. But the, the, the snow but is she all, had a 40, all but stopped. The track is speeding up. She had a 4200 lead. Now she's got a 3300 lead. So, uh, so she'll. I don't know if she'll move up. Christina De Bruyne is done in yeah. the winner's box. That was uh, the break woman, Sarah, Sarah Bellani. Gave us should be back here. No. Sarah neither Bellani, the break woman you just saw for up. Christine De Brown. She's been trained by the track record holder in the men's competition, Alex Kopax. But, uh, yeah, Sergeva and De Brown. This is one to forget, isn't it, John? Slump. You know, athletes go into slumps, but, I mean, Christina De Brown did pretty good the last couple World Cups. You know, this mm -hmm. season that she got on when they finally came over after uh, Christmas. But, you know, something about this Altenburg track as a way of humbling everybody. It's taps, uphill section. Not too bad, but not perfect. Well, this will be a year to walk away from and learn from. Najesta Segova leads. Five down, 15 to go. 
The gaps in this part of the field are pretty slender. 15th after three heats, Belgium's Anne van Nienhaus and Sarah Ertz. Eight hundreds ahead of current leader Nadezhda Segeva and Julia Belomesnik. And they are two hundreds behind the top BFR sled, which will be next on the ice. So a very close battle. They slip to place in heat three. At the very least, Anne will want to do is get that back. Yeah, their start times are 19th in all three heats. And a little drift there up top. That's a no-no. Does she hit there? No, nice. And watch if she hits here in the exit. No, very good. Amina Martin, we talk about her. Driving is great. And her 500, she, you know, she might bleed a couple more hundreds here, but she's got a chance to get it back on the bottom part of the track with good driving. Garrett's down to four, third best speed. Gonna need the perfect exit here. And that is perfect. Still at 500. So there is time on the bottom here, but she's gotta be straight in the, oh. in the graveyard, and she's not. Oh, oh, ah, she's gone. Oh, she's over. Oh, she came back. The sled went over twice and came here. back Watch up out. both times. Oh my That's goodness. Yeah. Altenberg. Uh, you saw you saw the brake woman, the rush the BFR break woman, Julia Belomesnik with her mouth open and her <laughs> holding her hands. That was that was not just close Belgian once. Coach. Yeah, I think Sarah that might was be close here. twice. Well, out of breath, whatever. Yeah. But uh well they dropped the cut of spots, but yeah. She's down wow. on the runners. Now she's a little tap here. Now she's, you know, this is the graveyard. This is why we call it the graveyard. Watch this picture of her rolling into the curve. Watch this, the, the drift. Look at her roll in. Roll out. Sled's of it. over. That's, that's the first crash. Comes back up. Then she catches. Wow. And it, wow. it crashes again. Look. How? Oh. She's oh, got no control goodness. in the last 200 meters. Nope. <laughs> yeah, and that's just a lot of whiplash there. She's feeling yeah, very neck, second hand. The doctors will take her right in. She's yeah, got a neck problem Definitely, there. definitely. I think you just saw so Gaffy Scoots running down to, to see how track, she's doing. No? Well, they're out of the, the track. track. The sled's out of the to way. Tame. <sighs> yeah. Nothing can be taken for granted in this place. 200s ahead. In fact, uh, what are we talking about? A tenth now ahead of current leader Nadezhda Segeva as her teammate Anastasia Makarova with Alexandra Tarasova behind her. World Championship rookies, their first appearance on the big global stage in the world, and they are the top sled from their nation. The race within a race. And what we just saw from that Belgian sled, there's no guarantee this. BFR still will get to the bottom in one piece. I mean, there's gremlins all over this track, and the track's slow today. I mean, we're well off the track record pace. Yeah. But this track doesn't hand out prizes. You don't get a badge for being brave. And there are no legs. Good exit off the Chrysler. This is about well, the best weather that the women have had today. Yeah. 1600s, she's pulling away. Oh, gets it straight from the double tap. Yeah, she's going to leave Sergeva trailing in her wake. The rookie leads the veteran by three tenths. Best run of the day, and she's yeah. two tenths better than her third run. That's a big deal. She emerges from the World Championships as the BFR sled number one. And that has merit in a lot of athletes' selection procedures in each country. Your finish at the World Championships has a lot to do with your ranking going into the, the, the trials. Let's check out the lines between the two different BFR sleds. Sarah Gava in the lead, but Makarova catching. That's a yeah. time lapse, too. High there. Crossover, but look how quiet the cowling didn't split at all, Martin. She didn't steer too much there. She had a great bottom half. A little mistake here, but doesn't steer out of it. Takes her medicine. There she is. Big smile on her face as she hugs her break woman. And that is the ninth best trip of 26 sleds so far today. But the weather is getting better. 
And is that a chance for Margot Bock and Carla Seneschal of France to move up? They're tied for 12th with Cynthia Appia of Canada. They're 300 of 11th, and they're less than a tenth out of a top 10 finish. Martin, the third heat of a bobsled race is like the third round of a golf tournament. It's moving day, and she moved herself into the 11th best time of the third run, so she moved up and gets deficient start times, but we've seen some pretty good driving out of her, especially in that third run. Runs all the way down back. the wall into the Chrysler. But she had really good intermediate speeds with four and five. Watch out here, though. She got late into 11. That might cost her in the graveyard. She's perfect, but, but she's way back, Mark. Yeah. Way back. She's going to fall Speed at least. lost. At least uh, one. Drops two. two spots. Where did that oh, time go? that's really go? disappointing. Where did that? Mark, she did so well in the first run, the third yeah, first run of today. Can't believe it. On the bottom part of the track, some mistakes she made. Someplace she made a big mistake. Well, she came tapping all the way down to the Chrysler. Right here, let's check this out. There's the first yeah, tap, that's there. out of three. Now let's see if she gets out of four here, out of Omega without hitting the right hand wall. No, this is now it's down to 11-12. That's too much of 11. And then she bumps yeah. over into 12. That's not the normal line. Here in the finish, before the finish line, she ducks her head for aerodynamics, but that might have yeah. backfired on her, Martin. Yeah, well, she'll be disappointed to have lost a couple of spots, and Anastasia Makarova might be surprised. She might pick up another one here. Makarova was just... 13, 1600s behind the tie for 12th place. Cynthia Appiah and Erica Voss, two ninth fastest runs on day one. A real loose one. Only 18th out of the 20 sleds in heat three. She needs to get her mojo working again and find that first day speed. Because a top 10 is definitely achievable. Good starts. Best start of the heat so far. Ooh, she came so close to hitting that wall right at the exit of, of the straightaway. This is the race within a race we talk about with the Canadians. Appius, only 300 behind her teammate Riesling, who comes up next. And Martin, we saw this athlete last week, a brakeman moved to the front seat in her first ever World Cup, finished fourth which was astonishing to everybody. And, and yeah. then she came over here, and I was really worried about her at this Altenburg track. Doesn't have a lot of experience, but this has been a fantastic month for this athlete who's made the transition from the back seat to the front seat. And this is a pretty good run. Gaps coming down over Makarova. 2300s at the line, so she takes wow. the lead. Mark. There's Alpha Willemsen, her driving coach. better. Yeah. Martin, where would 5805 put her in that third run? That is an awesome run right there. 5805, wow. six best in the third run. Now, the track's getting quicker, there's less snow, but there's no question that was a much better run, and you can hear it. This is a rookie, another... This, this athlete right there gets some trips. She could make a name for herself next year in Beijing, because she is a great mm -hmm. starter. Look at the... The way she jumped in the sled. You know, she is a great yeah. athlete. Here's that look at her. Almost hit the right wall there. That's the luge yeah. entrance there. She boy, that could have been a disaster. Then here on Curve. Dodge Martin, that this is a I don't know how many trips she's got on this track, Martin. But she's does this has been a fantastic performance. Whether or not yeah. she beats her teammate coming up. That's the brakeman. <laughs> yeah. So there's Erica Voss, the brake woman. Next up, Alicia Rissling ended up as the top Canadian after our first day, our first three runs. So Alicia Rissling holding a three hundredths of a second lead over Cynthia Appiah. 77 start the first run, 77 start the second run. And this is a Canadian national championship competition, the race within a race. 
to emerge. Who's candidate of one? Good lines and there. Then, yeah. Red Melissa numbers. Melissa Lockholtz should be in this battle as well. They just don't back. have enough spot. Yeah. She's she got to keep the it to 1,200 spec. 17, Martin. This is going to be tougher to overcome that deficiency. Less speed I mean, as well than Appiah. She's got speed lines available. It's not going to happen. She just doesn't have it going. Maybe yeah. too much Cynthia steering. Appia is going to be the going top to Canadian. And two spots. She's going to drop two, two spots. spots. She's going to behind fall. Makarova. She is behind Makarova. Wow. Wow. The two, two young drivers, the two ex brakemen Cynthia Appiah and Melissa Lotholtz, might end up being Canada 1 and 2 next year unless Alicia Rissling and Christine DeBrun can really turn it around in the summer. They've got massive challenges from Lotholtz and Appiah. She says, I, I don't know what happened, she says. I agree. Yeah. I don't know where she lost it, but look at these lines. Those better than most here. Watch the Cowan split. Hardly split. She didn't steer that much there. And the lines in the 13. Off. Maybe too, yeah. Martin, maybe too much control. I don't know, but yeah. she doesn't know, and I don't know. <laughs> 10 down, 10 to go. The final heat of the BMW IBSF Women's Bobsleigh World Championships. In the top 10, four German sleds, two Swiss sleds. And the first of those is Melanie Hassler with Irina Stable behind her. Melanie, the silver medalist in the Junior Worlds a couple of weeks ago, after bronze medalist, rather, after claiming bronze in the World Cup the week before in San Moritz, her home track. 586, a great getaway. Martin, I talked about that moving day in bobsleds, the third heat, and she had the seventh best time of the third heat to put herself into the top 10. Well, she's got better awesome and better. Result for her. 16th, 16th in the first heat, 10th in the second, 7th in the third heat. She's got to hang on to that. Six best speed at the Chrysler. She could be in trouble. Ooh, watch out. She almost hit the lip there. Mark, this isn't going what, the way she wants it to. She could fall three she's, places. She's been super quick at the bottom all week. 4,600 back, not the final heat that she needed. She nope. is going to drop back to fifth place. Four spots. There's a top, that's Whoa. a big deal. Top 10's got to be a big deal to the Canadians. You know, funding, something to do, you're placing in the World Championships, top 10, she's a rookie. You know, there's a lot on the line for a lot of these athletes. And that is a run that yeah. Hassler would like to forget. Watch her almost yeah. hit the lip here, Martin. This, I don't know, if she's up in no man's land, up in the frost, not here. Watch the next pressure point. Watch, how, this is late too, yeah. Martin. That's late as, pressure. You don't see anybody up there that high. And then when she steer, she had to steer off there hard. And, she, you know, that's not a slingshot effect. That's, that's almost like putting the brakes on a little bit. Well, she's had a great season so far. And if she hadn't been in the top 10, she wouldn't have missed it. They are still happy to be done and down her first world championships. For Martina Fontenev, it's a fourth world. She was seventh here last year. Second world's for Melanie Hassler. Melanie was 15th last year. She currently lies in fifth place with nine to go. So she will be a little better than that. And again, good day one and a very disappointing third run. Mara Morel, the brake woman, came in literally 10 minutes before the start of the third heat after the uh, starting day's brake woman pulled up lame. So Mara will have had at least a proper warm-up this time. Hopefully they'll get a little closer to their first couple of starts. And Nadia Pasternak not able to start heat three. Martinez from, from Zurich, and she's an architect professionally. She's going to find a way to snake her way down this track and stay in the top 10, which I'm sure she's got some targets she's got to hit for funding. That bad third run, Martin, prevented her from moving up the scale. She's got two tenths. 
in the bank, but we know that two tenths on this track can disappear yeah. quickly. Not sure with can. lines like 1800s. that. 1800s. Well, 1800s that up, speed, so she's though, still kept that alive. Tap there. 2000s. Oh, yeah, very ooh, sideways. Look at this. Watch out. That's what this track can do. You can't fall asleep any place. 1000s could all go away. That skid is going to be really costly. Very close at the line. 800s back. Appia and Voss move up again. They will be no worse than ninth in their first World Championships. Boy, Mark. Martina Fontenay, 800s back. Still in the top 10, though. But Martin, well, she's a, good a very day one. experienced driver. Yeah, not a great day, too. She taps here, she goes in the middle of the curve. Levin, does she just steer hard out of 12 and watch the skid here? That's not the way you want to go into one of the big pressure curves. You know how much steering she had to do there, Martin? That two tenths lead she had right there. That's where she threw it away. This this wasn't bad, but the damage had already been done, and yeah. the track gets another one. Lost 41 hundreds there to Cynthia Appia in one run. So there is Erica Voss, Cynthia Appia out of shots. Come on, Ilko. There she is. All right, eight to go. Here's our World Cup champions from this year. Katrin Bile and Jennifer Onasania for Austria. Finished in ninth place in last year's Worlds here. Eighth place after three heats. They want to move up, not back. Not bad starts, pretty consistent all three heats. Brakeman Martin, what a profession. She's a social worker with special needs children. Yeah. And she's been healthy wow. all season long. It's one of the, these two have had great start times. That's why they won the World Cup title. Look at that line. She flops it out there, comes straight. Look at the lead. Where? 6,200 speed. speed. Only the 11th best speed. Now it's the fifth well, best holds, speed. 5,500 yeah, speed. the Chrysler. Skidding away, but this is her trying to move up the order into the top half dozen. She's only 1100 out of six run. position. This could be a real move. Four wow. tenths is the improvement. 28-29. The fourth best time of the run. Looked like it had more Still. potential from that up top, Martin. Yeah, still a quarter second slower than Cynthia Appia. Cynthia a 58.05, 58.29 for Katty Bile. But a big smile on her face. She has a crystal globe from this crazy season. First Austrian lady ever to win a crystal globe World Cup champion in bobsleigh. Look at that line. She came out there a little late, but Martin, that. It's textbooks right there. Yep. And then Down the here, middle, avoid 11, the snow. 11 12 combination. Look at the cowling. Nothing. She'd hardly steered through there. Little bit of a skid here. This is where she started losing the time back. That skid cost her. Jennifer. <laughs> She's going to be the best Dutch Looking finisher Dutch. on the first weekend. Now an Austrian citizen as well. Angie Greco and Katarina Vick. Seventh after the first three heats, 300s ahead of Catty Bile, moved up after a disappointing first run. Third quickest in the second heat, sixth quickest in the third heat. This is what we expected of this young lady. We told the story last year entering the World Championships here. She had just came, oh, that's a bad hit there, really high. Oh, this is a loose run. But she, she was a second place finisher at the last World Cup of the year, came in here with high hopes. After the first heat, she was in the top five, then crashed in the second run. Martin, so she's got a little little uh, argument going with the track. She wants to get here just finish number one, and if she finishes in the top seven or eight, great achievement. Looks like she's, she's going to lose the spot to Catty Bile. 1600s back, it's just back. slipping away. 
This is her third World Championship. She has not completed one yet. Now she has 1,200s back, but she crashed out on day one in Whistler, crashed out on day one here last year. Now she's got four runs and a top 10 finish, and that is what she needed. Martin, we keep talking about Altenburg last year. Why are the World Championships in Altenburg last year and this year? They were scheduled to be where I'm sitting right now in Lake Placid, New York. And of course, COVID has moved everything into Europe. But uh, this mistake she made right there, Mark, with the back end of the sled here. Now look at the nose. The nose is now going in too late into that next curve. She gets really high, had a dive out of there. And then she still got a mistake going all the way down to curve nine. Yeah. But she settled at this point. Mark, still a top eight finish. She's still a great result for yeah. her especially considering that she crashed the last two world championships out of the competition. A hundred, a hundred percent, absolutely agree. So if a top eight finish is great for Andrea Grecu, is six good for the Olympic champion, the 2019 world champion, Mariami Amanka was fourth last year, just missed out on the medals in the women's bob. But look at that second heat. That's the torpedo under the waterline. Vanessa Mark, the biggest, the strongest, the fastest of the German break women behind her. And Yamanka needs that start. In men's bobsled, you find decathletes every place. In women's bobsled, you find a lot of heptathletes. Good start from the Olympic champion who's, you know, we talked about Sarah Gava being in a slump this year. Yamanka is probably in the biggest slump of anybody. And, you know, she's the last of the four German sleds. Yeah. You know, there's another German, there's a fifth German sled that, that we've seen on the World Cup circuit this year. What a competition that Olympic trials of Germany is going to be for next year for the three <laughs> sleds going to the Olympics. Yeah, no kidding. That's, and that's not good it, there. Mariami Yamanka, another huge skid out of Chudai. She makes a mistake down here in the graveyard. She could lose her position. She's That's gone. a good line there. But the graveyard only best speed. No. Five, it's going it's right to gone. the 100. Katy Bile or Mariana Yamanka. And Yamanka hangs on. How did she find that? Oh, listen, the. Uh, she found a little German shortcut down there at the bottom, Martin. She was really good in the in the graveyard, and uh, she had it down to 500s. But from that point, 13, 14, into the graveyard, 15, she found three more hundreds. And, you know, she's going to finish in the top seven, but she's not going to be happy with this performance. This, this. here is late. Matthias Höfner leaning watch. over the barrier there, watching. One of their driving coaches. Yeah, he knew how to drive. Like, what are you doing? What uh, are you doing? Yeah. Especially, look at that. That's a double skid. Yeah. Hanging out late in nine. It's not good. It's not a great look. But Mariama, Ma Mariama Yamanka leads with six to go from Katy Bile and Andrea Greco. Alana Myers-Taylor and Silver Ho Sylvia Hoffman, one of two American sleds in the top five. From here on in, it's all stars and stripes, or black, red, and gold. Germany versus the USA for the top five positions. A lot of fourth, six, and six. 464 there, which is the same time she had in the third run. Just has not. You know what, she's won on this track before, Mark. You know, so she just hasn't had it going. She hasn't quite missed it up. is a good sign. This is the BTC sled that Kaylee Humphreys won gold in last year. Kaylee's in a brand new sled this year, but Alana's not quite got the edge yet that she needs. Oh, that's a rough transition there. Yeah. 2700's lead. She's straight in the graveyard here, Martin. She posts a good time. 2300, she's coming back a little bit. If she gets here with like 2500's lead or so. That's a statement. 15, Ooh. lost a lot of time on the bottom. I don't know if that's gonna hold. That's the best time of the run. 
Yeah. No, it's not. It's the... Uh, no, 5805 well. by Cynthia Appier is still 21 yeah. hundreds better than that That's run. unbelievable. I know, isn't That's it, That's a though? statement run from a rookie. That's unbelievable. Yeah. But Alana, you know, if Alana was competing in Lake Placid right now, I bet you she wouldn't be in fifth. You know, on her home track. I mean, the, the, yeah. there's still a United States athlete atop top of the leaderboard, but this one here, again, she's won on this track before. She's had success. She's had a couple mm -hmm. crashes on this track. This was late here. I got a little nervous here on the exit of the Chrysler. Watch this. And then you come over and hit this wall, and then you go. She hit and came straight, because she can drift to the right. But Didn't race last year. Hoffman. So she's had a short season this year. Stephanie Schneider now shooting for the medals for Germany with Leonie Fiebig behind her. Second fastest run in Heat 3. And Schneider must do that again if she wants a medal here. Her persona is pretty erratic, out. Martin. Yeah, she sure is. She puts another Bronze. one down like she just did. She could have a chance to win a medal. Her brakeman run is her cool. only she, shot. She Brett Brakeman was a gymnast at one time, Martin, went to track and field. Yep. She's a sports scientist in the German military. I found that yeah. interesting bio on her. But now it's Snyder, who's a world champion in her own right as a brakeman, as a driver. And she needs Whoa. to do what she did in the third run. She's not gaining Fourth any on speed. Alana. She's not putting her behind enough. She's got plenty uh, of time to beat Alana, though. She's first. No, she's I not think putting this enough might be distance. good enough to challenge. She's pulled away, well, Who knows? This is another good who run. Who knows what might happen? Stephanie Snyder, this what's she got at line? Oh, hard hit. 57. 57 98. The first sub 58 run of the, of the second heat. And that, it does put pressure on the next sled. Lara Nolter and Deborah Levy. Martin, that's well, we the should have two German sleds talk. in the medals, yes. but will it be Schneider? Martin, she had the second best time of the third run. She's got the best time so far in the fourth run. I bet you this is at least the first or second best time of this run. This was her only mistake, but she had a... Her, Martin, her nemesis in the competition was she was seventh in the first run. Look at the lines mm. between her and Alana in the Chrysler. Who climbs up here in the last pressure point? Look at, now watch Snyder come above and then dive out. So Alana kept the medium low yeah. line, but here in the finish, you know, they keep ducking their heads there and before that Omega finish line, they hit hard. Drive away, and that yeah, cost drive away from the wall. Yeah, never mind getting your head out of the way. Don't hit the wall. Three to go. Stephanie Schneider leads. Lara Nolter at the line. Crashed out in Heat 2 last year. Has a chance of a medal this year. She is the junior world champion. Deborah Levy behind her. And the gap, 1,500 you know, over Schneider. For Germany, all these athletes for Germany are military athletes, but Deborah Levy, she's an elementary school teacher. One of the few that's not in the German military or the German border guard, German police. And these two have the best start of the competition in every run. Yep. Nolta is a to fierce see competitor. Let's see what she's got. This 63. is for a medal, 559. Now, Martin, last year she came into the event after the first date, she was third. With really close to second, she crashed in the second run. Very disappointing. And here she's going to extract vengeance on the track and shoot for a podium today. Oh. She's got 19 hundreds in the lead. That's not good, Martin. She should have had more than that with that start advantage. She had a big skid. That might come but down, she's clean down to the Chrysler. It's going to be close. Speed, she was though. only 15 hundreds up. Taps out of the so. Chrysler. Oh, yes, now I do. Ooh. Here she comes. Yeah, but only the 16th best speed. She should have enough. 16 hundreds. She's going to be in the medals. Gonna it. It's going to be a German 1 2 with two to go. <laughs> so she is 95. in the medals. She posts the best time of the run. Yeah. Granny just. Then he squeezes the coach, just looks on. And... 
This young athlete here, Martin's seven races she's been in this year. She's been on the podium six out of seven times. Only missed yep. once. The only time this year, in fact, the only time in her career until Samaritz, until uh, Koenigsee, when she hadn't been on a podium was when she'd crashed out of races. So she's had one finish where she wasn't in the top three. And in the World Championships, that remains true. She finishes and she's in the medals. Yeah, she made some mistakes up top. Martin got away with it. She's now, emotional. talk about redemption. <laughs> Lara Nolta, yes. Not just finishing, but a medal. Well, last year she crashed Two. out. What a great comeback. Yeah. Two sleds to go. Kim Kalicki and Anne Kristenstrack. If Kalicki had done the whole season, she would probably have been the World Cup champion. But ifs, buts, and maybes, the silver medalist last year, she's got a very large advantage over her teammates. 64 hundredths of a second. But this track, anything could happen. Decent start, you know, she's got the fourth, fifth, fourth best start, and, you know, her destiny is in her hands. There's a good exit of four, four tenths. I mean, on this track, any track, four tenths is enough, except on this track. On third in the first heat, second in the second heat, fastest in heat three, but what she got left in terms of the gap. It's still half a second. It should be enough. She's got good speed. Heading for a second straight silver medal here, John. Oh, she's flying. This is going to put, you know, this is going to be no cakewalk for Kaylee Humphreys. This is a great run. That is a great run. Run. Kalicki just smoked everybody. 57.93. Track's getting quicker, Mark. And the snow is coming back, the track and only down. three, only three sleds have been under the 58-second mark in this second heat, and all three are German. Only four sleds were sub 58 in the first heat. Three German sleds, and Kaylee Humphreys. You know, wasn't perfect. A B for sure. But with the advantage she had, Martin, again, there's, there's no place to sleep on this track. And unlike where we were last week in Innsbruck, yeah, Yavol. Well, there is Kim. Kim Kilicki is our leader with Anne Kristen Strack, the silver medalist from last year. The gold medalist from last year goes last of all, Kaylee Humphreys, with Lolo Jones behind her this year. <laughs> Fastest in both heats on the first day, gave away only 500s in heat three. She leads by 2900s. 3100s lead. That'll probably come down to 28 or 29 because of the start. A couple hundreds difference in the start. It's a couple waves. She was get through here without hitting the wall. Perfect. I mean, she's won three times on this track as in the World Cup. She won last year's World Championships. The lead's down at 23. That's because of the start. But this is where and in the first three heats. She's quicker than Kalicki. And the gap's coming down. She down was faster 19. at the start than Kalicki. Her 2900s is down to 1900s. 25. Best speed she stabilized though, 25. Hit. This is what she's done, Martin. She's just got great eyes, hands, awareness. Driving a sled. First time ever in this sled was this week. And she's going to ride driving to the away to the gold medal. The world champion yeah. for 2021 is Kaylee Humphreys of the USA. And Lolo Jones gets her first world championship gold sitting down. Also, well, she's got three world championships indoor track, Mark. She's a world champion yeah, in exactly. indoor hurdles three different times. But she had to run the whole way down the track champion. for those. Yeah, there you go. This time she ran the first 30 meters and the rest she had to just breathe hard. Kaylee Humphreys and Lolo Jones, the world champions.
For Kaylee Humphreys, it's a fourth gold medal, a second in two years on the same track. That has never been done before in women's bobsleigh and may never be done again. But in this strangest of seasons, on half a season at best of racing, Kaylee Humphreys again is the best in the world. And Martin, she gets a chance to do it again next week in the monobob. Oh, yeah. Well, 57.87, that was the fastest run in the second heat again from Kim Kalicki, the silver medalist for a second straight year. And Lara Nolter makes it onto the podium in third place with Deborah Levy. So those are your podium finishers. Again, a little bit of sorting out in the final heat but there's a lot of sorting out among some teen lineups to be done before next season. Kaylee Humphreys paints herself in very firmly as the best women's bobsledder. There is Lolo Jones, persuaded to come back out of retirement during the summer by Kaylee Humphreys and give bobsledding one more go. What do you reckon, John? Do you reckon she's glad she took that call right now? And the coaches told me, Mike Kahn said to me, that her velocity on this track, especially because it's such a long run, provides Kaylee that extra velocity. Now, they might not have the best start, but they've got better velocity. And Kaylee's comfortable with Lolo? Well, pretty good choice. Yep, there you go. Well, a, a great couple of days action from women's bobsled. Kaylee Humphreys, again, the women's world champion. And that's it for Saturday's action. Two Man concludes on Sunday afternoon. So join us for that. And then the busy weekend where we've got men and women's skeleton, the mixed team competition, the monobob, and the four man. All of that in four days in Altenburg. For today, though, from John, from me, and from the BMW, uh, from the IBSF TV crew from the World Championships in Altenburg. Thanks for being with us. Stay safe. See you tomorrow.